How's it going this week, everybody? This week I'm gonna be having a woman on who encountered some type of creature while she was on her honeymoon. They were staying in a forested area in a cabin and something actually got onto their roof and was making a lot of noise. Definitely wasn't just some run of the mill animal, that's for sure. Also just wanted to do a quick shout out to all the members that have been signing up. I really do appreciate it. If you are interested in the membership, you can head over to challengeoftheunknown.com and get early access to new episodes two weeks before they come out. And one last thing before we get started tonight, everybody, is this episode is sponsored by Smoky Mountain Squatch Coffee Company. Nathan sent me over the cowboy blend to try, and honestly, I love it. I'm a big coffee drinker. That's no secret to all of you. And just for my audience, there's a 10% off discount code if you use CTU at checkout. There's a link in the description if you'd like to order some. Thanks for listening. I don't know how I really had to explain it. It was it was just something cute I was trying to do because it was my freaking honeymoon. So I brought some flowers with me that I had picked from outside my house, and I brought them up and I arranged them in this little bird feeder thing on the porch. And when we went to go to get some groceries and everything after we showed up at the cabin, after I had we put the luggage in and I had done this with the flowers. Once we came back, that wooden figurine or bird feeder thing whatever it was 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 smashed all over the porch and i didn't find my flowers until later they were like 20 feet away in the driveway and just stomp i mean i didn't see any footprints but they were squished flat and that was pretty strange and that's how it started and the first night that we were there like nothing really weird happened until we went to sleep my husband woke up, he said, to something that was, like, banging on the support beams under the cabin. The cabin overhung part of the mountain, so it was probably the front part of the cabin was probably about 15 to 18 feet off the ground, like, rough estimate. And the back of the cabin was more into the hillside. And so he said that something was big was banging on those support beams under the cabin. And it was hitting the beam so hard that that we had a mirror hanging off the wall and it was like shaking the mirror on the wall. And he was telling me, you know, how much power it would take to shake the entire cabin to have like things on the wall shaking. And he was really a surprise that I didn't wake up for this. He tried to wake me up and I, Pretty much was just out of it. Um, And he said he heard a very loud bang from right in the middle of the floor of the cabin. There were these very large, um, like, guidebooks to the area uh, sitting on the coffee table. And he said he sounded like someone picked up one of the, like, an encyclopedia large. I mean, like someone picked one of those up and dropped it from the ceiling onto the floor. But he said there wasn't actually anything there. There was just a loud bang, like a big book being dropped that came from like right in the center of the, of the cabin at the end of our bed. And he said he was really surprised that didn't wake me up either. So he's trying to wake me up and this buzzing starts, this noise and... That finally woke me up, and right when I woke up and went out to go to go find out what the hell it was, uh, it stopped. So pretty much, he was starting to try to tell me about the banging, but I was really tired and pretty out of it. So I I just kind of fell asleep sleep on him, and that's not normally like me. Normally I think I would have been more concerned and stayed up and listened, but I kind of just passed back out on them and I slept really, really deep, which I don't normally do in new, new places. So the second night in the morning, we're sitting there talking about the night before talking about whether it was a bear and he's like, no way that was a bear. And it reminded me of that kind of ringing that we had heard. It, right when we started talking about it, we heard the noise again. And so we looked behind the TV 
and it was a landline telephone. We, I had actually thought it was an alarm clock and it was a landline telephone. And so when I answered it, it was like silence and then these weird bursts of static and then silence. And my husband was like, no, and he unplugged it and was like, we're not even doing this. We're not playing this game. This is a prank call from somebody that knows the number of the cabin, you know, cabin management has our cell phone number. So he just unplugged the phone and decided that that was going to be it with the phone. So that night we went and we got in the hot tub and it was covered with like not fully enclosed, but we had like wooden slats around three of the sides. And then one side was open to the rest of those wraparound porch. And there weren't a lot of lights very close to the side of the porch with the hot tub because there were a lot of, a lot of bugs out there in Tennessee and they really swarmed the lights. So it was kind of dark back there. And there was like a blue light behind us. And it's probably, I'd say like about the size of a cantaloupe and it seemed bright, but it didn't really cast like a bright light. And I just really kind of thought it was an LED. And I remember mentioning that I thought it was pretty cool. And it was there for probably about, I mean, a couple hours. We were out there for at least an hour and a half, if not longer. And the light was there the whole time. And like right when we decided to get out of the hot tub, it blinked three times and then it just went completely out. And so I remember commenting to him like, yeah, that was kind of weird how that went out. So I wanted to report it to cabin management so they could replace the light because I liked the mood lighting, you know? So the next morning I went out to see if it was on a post or where it was mounted or what I needed to call and tell them that we needed service exactly. And there was, there was nowhere to put a light out there. There were no fixtures, there were no cables, there were no wires, there were no posts. There was absolutely nothing behind that back area of the hot tub besides just wood. It was really odd. I thought that was odd. That's why, I, that's when I mentioned orb. It has have been, I'm not sure what it was, but it wasn't a light. There was, there was no way it was a light. And we had, uh, the bathroom mirror actually looked out into that area directly behind the hot tub or not the bathroom mirror, excuse me, the window, the bathroom window looked out into that area behind the hot tub and you got a really creepy vibe from that window. We, we made sure I didn't tell my husband that I felt it because I didn't want to sound paranoid. And he actually made a comment <clears throat> separately to me about it. So we both felt it independently that we just got this creepy vibe. Like there was always something checking us out to that window. So we kept the bathroom door shut the entire time. And that's the same area where we saw that weird blue light from as well. Yeah. You know, that's really interesting. You know, I hear a lot about these orb type, uh, visual anomalies that people describe. They're always really weird. And I, I don't know what they are. Uh, I'm not sure if you're, familiar with the whole Sasquatch and light connection that people describe, you know, I, in my opinion, I think Sasquatch is probably a, just a, some type of bipedal hominid that we just don't know about and haven't discovered and acknowledged yet. But, you know, the lights thing is well reported and it's really interesting to me. Uh, so, you know, maybe that's what was going on, not to speculate too early in the story, but you know, the, the light anomaly is a very, uh, it, it's it's an eyebrow razor, that's for sure. So so, what happens next? Uh, I slept. I slept through it all. I slept through a lot of this. Unfortunately, like I slept like the dead. Like I said, which is really weird for me. Normally, when I'm in new places, I'm a very light sleeper, and I slept through all of this. But the next morning after the orb experience, my husband told me that like every time he started to drift off, something would bang on one of those posts under the cabin and he said it was kind of weird because it seemed like no matter how long he waited to lay down which you shouldn't have been able to see inside the cabin from 15 feet below it every time he would go from sitting up to laying down and close his eyes it would bang and he was like saying that was freaking him out that it seemed to time it perfectly 
It's really interesting, you know, you've got a lot of aspects of like kind of paranormal stuff in this story and it's it's definitely interesting, you know, I hear a lot about the banging and the you know, the weird sounds. What, what do you think that these uh, these entities are? Do you think that they're people? Do you think that they're something else? As far as Bigfoots, um, I really don't know. I, I tend to think that there are groups of, of undiscovered humanoid primates, but I also think that there are other weird things in this forest that maybe sometimes get classified as Bigfoot as well that aren't necessarily... I'm, I have kind of a 40 in view about it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I understand uh, where you're coming from. Uh, yeah, what, what I don't other? know if it's spiritual or interdimensional. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're all right. Uh, yeah, so so why don't you, uh, you tell me what happened next? On you're, you're at the third night now. And you've experienced some weird things. I I guess I want to ask you, at what point did things start getting weird for you? At what point was it, like, fun? For me, it was the very last morning. Like, the through the next couple of nights, mainly my husband experienced, like, sleep paralysis with, like, this grudge-type lady with white dress. Like, the classic lady in white. White dress, black hair, black eyes like black mist swirling around her. And it was like a sleep paralysis type thing where it was hyper real. He said he kicked at her too. So, I mean, it was, he was in a strange state of consciousness and it really was freaking him out. And he didn't actually tell me a lot about that until we got home from the vacation. Cause he didn't want to ruin my, our honeymoon and, you know, be all freaked out over, you know, what we're most probably, he thought we're most probably just dreams. Like I said, my husband doesn't tend to believe that all this is connected. He believes that some of it was just weird stuff, and he believes that like there was really a Bigfoot out there. And me, I'm I'm a little different. I'm not really sure what happened. I think it might all be connected. Like I said, a little more forty. And but either way, so he had some sleep paralysis episodes that I didn't hear about until later. And then uh, night on the fifth night. I mean, I felt watched from the woods in the hot tub, which is our second. This was supposed to be our last night, and we had decided to book one more night. So this was the first time I felt that. So we went inside early that night, and he, at, my, at one point, my husband said, like, someone was just banging the crap out of one of the support posts below the cabin, but it didn't last very long, and it didn't happen again. It was just, like, one just, like, bang, 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 and then nothing else that whole fifth night and then the last night that we stayed there was the one where i experienced something it was not even night it was about 8 02 in the morning i remember looking at my clock and been angry because at first i thought it was roofers there was a very loud banging coming from the top of the cabin and it just kept going on and on and on and on. I kept waiting for my husband to wake up and couldn't understand why he wasn't waking up. And I'm thinking, like, why Why did we book an extra night here? I was pretty upset with management. I was thinking it was roofers and they didn't communicate. And I was about to go tell them off. And when I, put my, when I went to get out of bed, I threw the blankets back. I put my feet on the ground. The knocking stops and there's this... The, the front door of the cabin is like four feet from my side of the bed and the freaking hand doorknob jiggled in front of me and the door is like half glass and I can see that there's no one came anywhere near the door. And so I jumped back up in bed and put my covers up around me and it started right back up on the roof. There's like no pause. And it's just like banging the crap out of it. So I turn around to wake up my husband and that's when he opens his eyes and he's like, what the hell is that? So we sit there, we talk about it for a few minutes and he's saying the same thing. Like, it's just roofers. It's just people. So he goes to get up and go, I was like, I don't know. And so I told him what I have with the door and he's like, well, I'm going to go see what it is. So he goes to put his feet off the bed, throws his blankets back, gets his feet off the bed and the roofing stops. And there's just like this scratch down the roof. It's like, and I just remember looking at him and I was just like, what's that called? Like, what's that called? Is what I said. And 
it was pretty freaky. And as soon as I said that, the banging just started back up, and he put his feet back up. Then he put his feet back down again, and the same thing happened. It was just like a long scratch, like there was something with claws up there, and the banging started, and he was just like, I'm over this. He had had a firearm, legally owned, with him by the hot tub every night. You know, we know there are bears and such out there. So he grabbed his firearm. He went outside, and from... The front door of the cabin to a view of the roof was maybe 15 feet. And by the time he got there, I mean, we're in a cabin hanging off the side of the mountain and the roof's just open to view. You can go online and look at it. On my Reddit post, it says what cabin it is. And please don't let me get in trouble for that. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know if that's okay that I said that. That's fine. But, um, he, he didn't see anything. He said he heard something about, I'd say 50 yards down the hillside in the woods, he said he heard in the bushes. But when I say 50 yards over, you, you got to think of how far up from the roof that would be. Like I said, the deck itself is probably like 15 to 18 feet up. So the roof of the cabin was even higher than that. And the grade of the drop off, you know, we were literally hanging off the side of a mountain. So it would have been a very, very, very far drop. And there wasn't like huge trees. There were smaller trees. There was some underbrush, but it wasn't really thickly overgrown. You know, I don't know. He didn't see anything. He just, he said he heard some rustling in the brush down there and that's it. And he never saw, he never saw anything. And I mean, this is the, the sun's bright. It's out. This banging, banging was loud. And like I said, it went on. But when I checked my phone again, it was 8.36. So that puts it like right around 35 minutes. And I didn't check it exactly right after because we were really freaked out. So say I did 10 minutes at most, you know, it's 15 or 20 minutes of banging, you know, after I woke up. I don't know how much long it was going on before I woke up. But it went on for long enough. We were fully awake and we were both we both heard it very clearly. It was very, very loud. It was shaking the entire cabin. Everything on the walls was shaking. You could feel it through the bed. It was really, really odd. I don't know what it was. I mean, but that's what happened. That was basically our experience. You know, that's that's a pretty intense experience. You know, at first when I heard your story, I was leaning a lot towards the kind of paranormal experiences. You know, but now that I hear about it, you know, it it definitely isn't anything like that easily written off you know when we talk about animals and stuff you know it would have to be something huge on your roof to be shaking the walls to the point where stuff's falling over and like what bangs we were talking about like cougars and bears and stuff like this thing was pounding like boom 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 like i i mean maybe we're wrong we're not by any means like professionals <laughs> at all but I, I can't i can't see any way that a cougar or a bear could make that banging noise I, I don't know how that would be possible from on a roof or at all really they yeah. don't have opposable thumbs right and and just the consistency you know of, of the sounds is very interesting because like if you would hear like say a cougar jumped up on your roof and w went walking across it you know it's it's not going to last for 35 minutes i don't think first of all and also you know I, I, the cougar just doesn't have the weight, you know, they're a few hundred pounds, but that's not going to be consistent banging for 30 minutes. You know, you're going to hear a little bit of creaking maybe, but not like what sounds like roofers on your roof, you know, hitting something with hammers and, and walking around up there. So, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning more towards a Sasquatch encounter at this point or, or something else, you know, because it, it has to be big to make that kind of noise, whatever it was, and, and you know, I'm kind of leaning towards that. So, I guess I want to ask you what, what you think it was that you encountered that night. Uh, my husband thinks it was a Bigfoot. I believe, unless I'm wrong. Uh, the last time we talked about it, he was pretty sure he thought that it was a Bigfoot. Myself, um, I lean more towards, like, uh, I would say... I don't know. Have you ever heard? Are you familiar with the term like genus Loki or Loki? Like, uh, I can spell it better than I can say it. Like a local spirit. Like, 
I don't know, like nature spirits, elementals, I guess. Right. Yeah, I've heard about those. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. I don't know, because, like I said, there were orbs and there were weird phone calls through the landline. And Oh, the, they were screaming. They were out there that morning that we were packing up as fast as we could and stuff. We've been hearing, like, co- college kids partying over somewhere across in the mountains. We heard them echoing down the last two nights we were there that were Friday and Saturday nights. And that morning when we were packing up, they were, they were all out there screaming for their friends, how they hadn't, no one had seen, have you seen this guy? Have you seen this guy? They were all yelling for somebody. They were all looking for somebody. So that freaked us out even more. So, I, I mean, I really don't know what it was. I, I don't want to say Bigfoot because I don't know how Bigfoot would call me or, or bring an orb outside the, the hot tub or if the sleep paralysis was complete coincidence and had nothing to do with anything, even though it never happens to him any other time, you know? Right. Whenever I listen to stories like that, I always try and identify, like, what's going to be the Black Dawn event in a story? You know, like, because whenever, even in controlled situations, you always experience, say, like, a Black Dawn event, which is something that just was a random coincidence that just happened to happen, but it's not, you know, associated with any anything else. But here it sounds like there's a lot of black dot events that don't really seem to fit. So it, it's kind of hard to pin it on one individual thing. So, you know, who really knows what you what you encountered that night? And it it's really it's a really interesting story. And I'm sure some viewers will write in about it. We've but, always wanted to tell someone about it. We had wanted to warn the people in the cabin closest to us, but we did. They had kids with them. They we were afraid. <laughs> we were afraid they were going to think we were nuts. And who do you call and tell? Tell somebody that something tried to like come in through the roof of your cabin and you were having like paranormal cryptid, like everything. We had everything. It was really, really absurd, actually. And if I were someone else, I don't know if I would believe me personally. So, <laughs> right. And well, the only thing that really checks all those boxes is really like stories ar- around Skinwalker Ranch and such like that as you hear about like the whole nine yards of weird stuff you know paranormal cryptids and all that so you know who knows who knows what really went on at that cabin that night they uh, have cave systems out there there are a lot of cave systems in the Smokies you know it could know be that. a lot of people mention the the cave systems you know, when it comes to Sasquatch, and I, I've always pondered that, maybe, like, maybe they're using that for shelter and and stuff like that, and that's maybe why people don't see them as much as one of the main theories, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure about the, about the cave systems, but I know that you're in the right area for it, and also, there are creatures called, like, crawlers and such, which are kind of weird, they're, like, physical, but paranormal, same thing with skinwalkers, it's, like, they're kind of paranormal, but like they're they're physical also, so no one really knows what they are. And some people That's attribute that. Some people attribute that to Sasquatch too. Some people think that Sasquatch is more than just a an early hominid. That some people really associate a lot of paranormal stuff to the Sasquatch. And you know, while I don't subscribe to that in particular, you know, we really at the end of the day we don't know what these things are, and we don't know what any of these things are, you know, whether, you know, even when we're talking about Dogman or the Mothman or whatever we get into, it's all really interesting, but, you know, I, we're actually coming up at the end of our time slot here, and, and I'd like all to right. thank you for coming on, and, you know, I, I'm sure someone's, someone's going to write in and, and tell, tell, tell me that they've had this, a similar story. 